Very good, very good. Thank you so much. Of course, when he said you, you're an Eagles fan, you kind of blew up yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Eagles. Uh, Eagles. 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 Eagles.
We're like the Marines, the few and the proud. We're there digging into the Word of God. We're diving deep with our snorkels on. Now, some people like to kind of surfboard it. <laughs> Not us. We like to dig. We go down deep and deep to get grab the pearls of God's wisdom. And and but the churches have become so apathy in 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 their uh, with the things of God. Um, and then it says, it says, cast out the works of darkness. And we're talking about night. Alright? And, and of course, you know, when, when we talk about, you know, this here was also going back to Revelation 12. We, we are what? Christians are living what? Sacrifices, right? Give our bodies as living sacrifices to God. All of ourselves to God. Alright? And then... Um, uh, the cast off the works of darkness we talked about. Man's depravity and, and, and darkness is what? Also Satan's what? Dominion, right? It's Satan's dominion. And we are to put on the armor of light, it says, going back to Ephesians uh, 6. Time to put on the Lord Jesus Christ was my last point. And because sanctification, what is sanctification? But it's our spiritual growth. We are being sanctified each day. We are to be more like Christ, right? In our walk, in our daily life, everything. We don't just say we're Christians. We act like it. Amen. We are ambassadors of Christ. Yeah. If you're going to talk the talk, you need to walk the walk. Yeah. Or you need, you need to get off the highway. Yeah. you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. You know, you, 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 you're a Christian. So, sanctification is a spiritual process of growing and becoming more like Jesus. Paul uses the symbolism here of taking, putting on and taking off clothes. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, no provision is the basic meaning of planning ahead or forethought. Uh, most sinful behavior results from wrong ideas and lustful desires. Remember I said before, that the battle of sin is first lost in the mind. The battle of sin is first lost in the mind. Because, see, when we think about it, that's not the sin until we go ahead and do it. Alright? And Satan's always tempting you. He's pushing it. He's pushing it. He's pushing it. Yeah. yeah. But... So, this brings us up. I know my thing's loud because I had the music going on here. Hold on a minute. I'll just turn this off. Anybody hear me? I got a big mouth anyway, and with the mic, I'm dangerous. I don't want you all to even hear, needing hearing aids, you know? Um, but, anyways, you know, and here we're coming to the point in the scripture where there's conflict. Oh, you're trying to say there's conflict in a church? Don't tell me! Man! I mean, I mean, you look through the, all the scripture, there's always some kind of battle going on, isn't there? And there's fights. Why? Because of our sinful nature. If you look at the Old Testament, it records a civil war between the North the Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. And, and, and you have the family fights. Who committed the first murder? Cain, right? He killed Abel. I mean, look at Jacob and Esau. They were at each other's throats. Even in the womb, they are trying to fight to see who came out first. Yeah. <laughs> and so in the New Testament, um, we have the family of God. In every local church, there is a problem. If you go through the epistles and everything, Paul is dealing with a problem in the local churches. If you take a look at um, um, the, the church at Corinth, they were divided over human leadership, right? They were divided over human leadership and they were also going to sue one another. They were going to sue one another. And then you go ahead and look at Galatia. They were, they were 
trying to kill each other and biting and devouring each other. And then you take a look at uh, Ephesians and Colossians. You know, um, it, it, it uh, had to be reminded of the importance of unity in the body. Yes. I mean, I mean, it was on and on and on. And I, I bet you Paul said, am I an apostle or am I a referee? And it's no better today. It's no better. Well, before I jump to any more things here, let's take a look. We're going to read the first 12 verses. It says, Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Judge it. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Let him not which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another? Man servant to his own master. He standeth or falleth, yea, he shall be. Holden up for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth to eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. He that eateth not to the Lord is eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us hath liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or while thou judgest, thou set not thy brother. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Everyone give account of himself to God. And so we have these, uh, these uh, fights. Now, you wonder why David wrote in Psalms 133, 1, where he says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brother to dwell in unity. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I mean, we have the Sunday night fights. Uh, some of the problems stem from the background of believers, and like we asked before, we have different backgrounds here at Yellow Branch. We have those who were raised Catholic, those who were raised Pentecostal, you know, different doctrines. All right, and a lot of times when we say you were raised, but then you get saved, you start going to a Baptist church, but then you start still holding. You still want some things in the Baptist church and you, you had the Catholic church. And so, um, <clears throat> so the problem was here was the conflict of oh, the conflict, yeah, sound like Aflac. <laughs> the conflict in Rome with, with the uh, stronger, which means mature saints, and then the weaker ones were the immature saints. And the immature saints were really your legalists. All right, the legalists. And so you had the mature saints who weren't in bondage to rules and regulations. They ate meat. They didn't worship certain days of the week. What, what day are we supposed to worship on? Every day. <coughs> Not just Sundays. Every day. Some people say, well, we don't work. We worship on Saturday because Sunday was really named after the sun god. So, Saturdays was named after Saturn. <laughs> So you, you have 
these different backgrounds. So the Jews were from the legalistic background, and the Gentiles had to never worry about diets or, or what to eat. And so remember um, back in Acts 15, where the first church council met and had to decide over circumcision. Because the, the, the Judaizers were saying that you're not saved unless you get circumcised. And they're saying, no, it's wrong. See, they're holding on to the Jewish Tradition. law, traditions and laws and stuff like that. And so they're so the, the, the saints in were the saints in Rome were divided between special diets and special days. Um, some ate meat, while others ate only vegetables. Some thought of it as sin not to observe the Jewish holy days. You know, and, and if they kept their convictions to themselves and didn't say a word and just kept it to themselves and just did whatever they thought was convicted them, everything would have been peachy Jim Nandy. But no, then they had to start judging. We love to point the finger at everybody else. When we have a conviction, we try to have everybody join on board of our convictions. All right? And we are free in Christ. So let's see how the referee Paul deals with the situation here. With one side, the Jews, and on the other side, the Gentiles. And ding, ding, round one. Paul says here in verses 1 through 3, God has received us. God has received you. You are received, both Jew and Gentile. God has received you. God, uh, Paul was addressing those strong in the faith, the new spiritual liberty in Christ, and were not in bondage to those holy days. He was also addressing the weak ones, who were the immature ones, who were the legalistic ones that were holding these special days and died and said, now realize that, hey, they are free in Christ. What did Paul say in, um, in uh, Colossians 2.16? We don't have to worry about, you know, holy days and, and diets and foods and things because we are all in Christ. Christ has fulfilled the law. You know, I tried to, to, to pull off um, trying to not like chicken. <laughs> when I was in the National Guard, because I noticed that a lot of the Muslim folks over there in the National Guard, they were, they, they were getting special treatment. We had pork, they got chicken. So I said, hmm, I want to try this. So I told them that it was against my religion to eat chicken. <laughs> I needed hot dog. <laughs> Didn't work. Didn't believe me. But again, you know, but we hold to our own convictions. We hold to our own convictions. Um, God has received us so we may receive one another. You know, and so we don't need to hold on to the, the, um, the, the old stuff that we, we're brought into it, you know, from the Catholicism. There's a lot of things in Catholicism that, that we don't, we're Diango. <laughs> <laughs> you went up early? <laughs> Gee, I'm in trouble. <laughs> um, but Diana was raised, you know, Catholic. And a lot of times when we, we, we you know, get pictures of Jesus and Mary and all that stuff, it kind of, you know, bothers her because she has conviction because she was raised in all that and a lot of idols. You know, all the, the apostles and you got prayed to, you know, this one, that one, this one, that one, everything else. You know, you got saved. You know, I had, when I worked at Lifeway, I had a guy, I had a guy call one time and asked if we, I think it was Joseph, St. Joseph. He wanted to sell his house. He asked if we sold the statue of St. Joseph so he can put it in the ground by his house and everything so it would sell. I said, would you ever think of just praying? <laughs> Save your digging works. But anyway, um, 
So anyways, God has received us that we may receive each other. He is going beyond the Word of God to set up mankind, man-made restrictions on, on personal prejudices, even uh, prejudices or even convictions. Okay, just like when Peter, you know, he, he was raised Jewish and everything, and he had a hard time dealing with the Gentiles, right? But God wanted him to go reach the Gentiles, right? He was having a hard time. What did God do when he was having a hard time? He went up on the roof to pray, and what did God bring down? Oh, boy, we in trouble. Huh? The animals, the sheep, with the animals on it, the unclean animals. Unclean animals, right? Brought down the unclean animals. And, and when he looked at those, and he said, well, I can, my lips have never touched anything unclean. And what did he say? What God has made clean, don't call uncommon. He's basically talking about the Gentiles. So we are to love those who are different from us. We are to love the African American. We are love the Chinese. We are love the Mexican. Because they are all one in Christ. Those who repeat Jesus. Alright, so there should be no prejudicism in there. God had made it abundantly clear and had revealed his acceptance of the Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit that the Jewish believers received at Pentecost. And so then he became um, you witnessing to the Jews. But then Peter also had a hard time because he would be eaten over here with the Gentiles, but then when he saw, and he got in trouble with the Jews because he remember when he was in Cornelius' house, and, and witness to him and everything. Then the Jewish folks went to him and said, "Why are you were in, in the house of a you know a, you know, a Gentile eating with them?" And he was getting you know yelled at and everything. And then one time he was one way with the Jews and one time with the Gentiles. And what did and Paul jumped on? Remember in Galatians, Paul jumped on him about that and corrected him on the way he treated the Gentiles. The next point, um, so God has received us, God will sustain us. God is able to make him stand. We look at verse 4. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falls, yea, ye shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Our salvation isn't based on us. We might have our little convictions here and there, and what we should do and shouldn't do and stuff, but our salvation, we can't lose our salvation because it wasn't ours to begin with. You know, it's by the grace of God that we have it. All right? And so, um, and so God sustains us. He is able to make him stand. We did not earn our salvation as a gift. God is the master, we are the servants, right? When scripture's not clear, then we go with personal convictions. There's a lot of times scripture isn't clear on certain areas, all right? And so we shouldn't put judgment on someone else because of our own convictions, all right? Some people like wearing suits to church. Get all fancied up, nice suits and everything like that. Some people can't afford it. Some people are too <coughs> wide nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we have uh, and but but people would you know yell at the other person, they walk me in where you suit the church there and they we disrespect the sanctuary of God <laughs> and put their own convictions on someone else. And, and this is where Paul is saying that if you have a conviction of not eating meat, don't eat it. But don't put your conviction on her or her. And that's the problem that was happening, that these Jews were yelling at the ones who were mature Christians that were in freely. Now some people really extend their freedom in Christ. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> really extend it. But they were free in Christ but they were, and they were looking at these folks and said, how come they're not observing these holy days? How come they're not eating kosher? How come they're not doing it? How come they're not getting circumcised? You know, and, right. It's just, and so they were, 
they were, and it would cause a big stench because then the the mature Christians were getting mad and despised the weaker Christians. And it was a big um, what to do there. And But the, the whole point is, is that we don't answer to each other. We answer to God. To Jesus Christ. You know, and a lot of times, you know, I, I've seen it many times that you know, husbands and wives, you know, and one, one, say one quit smoking. Great for them, they quit smoking, okay? But the other one did not. But then the other one who quit smoking is just badgering and badgering and complaining and moaning and groaning and pushing at the other one to quit smoking. It's not their time yet. They have to have it in their mind and in their heart to do it before they do it. You know what I'm saying? But the other one is still badgering and badgering. And what is it called in the household? Friction. Friction and fights and everything else. And because you have to hold to your own convictions. If the Lord, you know, if you real and say, hey, the Lord told me to quit smoking, quit. And that's just because he's talking to you. He doesn't mean he's talking to you. You know, that's what Diana said when, I, when we moved down here. She said, the Lord is, is, you know, wants us to, you know, push us down to Virginia. I said, he hasn't talked to me yet. <laughs> I'm the man of the house. Why is he going to you first? What's up with that? You know? And I, I kicked against the goats, you know, the whole story, to make life short. But, you know, and we ended up down here. But I kicked against the goats. And I know we're running out of time, so I don't want to... Um, I see people looking at the clock saying, we got to get to the Methodists or we're going to get to the <laughs> When a brother or sister falls into sin, Jesus told us what to do in Matthew 18. Right? When somebody falls into sin and we see somebody in sin, what do we do? We don't just blab it or call up somebody on the phone and say, hey, guess what I saw? You go to that person. Talk to them privately. If they repent, then what happens? Then you get your brother back. Everything's fine, right? It's between you two. That's it. But if they refuse, then what do you do? You bring someone else. Then if they still refuse, then you bring it to the church. And that's church discipline. And But the whole point is we can't be going around policing up everybody. We can't be saying, you know, well, I saw this one doing this, or I saw this one. How come you're not watching this one? Oh, you really do I don't know the nut house. We have to worry about our own salvation. But just because it, if, if, it's, if you don't feel like it, if it's not clear in Scripture. Now, it's clear in Scripture on homosexuality, right? Fornication, adultery, you know, yada, 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 on and on and on. I mean, Ten Commandment. But, you know, if it's not clear in Scripture, you can't force your own conviction. You feel like the Lord leave. That doesn't mean it's on somebody else. And the next point is that Jesus Christ is Lord and Judge of us all. He's the head of the church. He's the head of our families. He's the head of us. It's us. We are the Lord's in verse 8. He says, for whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. We are His. And so, um, Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He died for each and every one. He paid the penalty on the cross for our sins. And He rose again on the third day to give us eternal life. We live for Him. We serve Him. We don't serve each other. We don't make other people happy. Make them feel good. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church is divided and weakened because they will not allow Jesus Christ to be Lord. That's the problem in the churches today. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. The number one chief is Jesus Christ. Serve Him. What did Jesus say when, um, um, when, when uh, He told John, or told Peter, that... Um, that he will be girded up and led somewhere where he didn't want to go. And then Peter got thinking about that, and he looked behind, and John was there, and he said, what about him? What did Jesus say? Yeah, that's none of your concern. That's none of your business. 
You just follow me. And so if we're all just worrying about our own salvations and our own walk with Jesus Christ, instead of watching everybody else and everybody else's move. So, and if, you, if there is a conviction, you feel convicted, well, do, do it yourself. I had some people come in here, I mean, a couple people, matter of fact. One, it was mainly, but it had nothing to do with food. <laughs> it was on the Sabbath. The Sabbath. Um, one, one guy was, was, uh, said we shouldn't be worshiping on Saturday instead of Sunday. We had that discussion. And the other guy said, well, you know, after church, I mean, you shouldn't mow, you shouldn't do anything on Sunday. He got back and he saw, you know, my wife mowing on that Sunday. We came back after my dad's funeral, everything. He came back to New York and everything. Nobody mowed the yard, so we had to get her stuff out from, you know, the trailer. We had to have the trailer back. And my wife was just mowing the first part of the lot. Boy, he had a fit. She was mowing on Sunday. That was sad. It was terrible. You don't want to mow on Sunday? Don't mow. <laughs> don't yell at us about that because it where's scripture that says don't mow on Sunday? <laughs> I didn't see that, do you? <clears throat> the strong and weak Christians one day must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. They will be judged, one another, they will be judged by the Lord. Verse 10. 1 Corinthians 3.13 says, Every man's work shall be manifested, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work in what kind of, what sort it is. And the, and the next um, scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.10 um, says, to me, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone must may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. We're going to be judged by the Lord. We're not going to be judged. You know, we need to worry about our walk. And if you see a brother or sister fall, what do you do? Help them up. Be there for them. Help them through the struggles that they're going through. We, there's so much temptations out there. But we can't be sitting. We're not on the judgment seat. Christ is. Yeah. We are to love our brothers and sisters. We are to love everybody. You know, and, and, and we are not the, you know, if there's a conviction, a personal conviction, if you don't think, if you think, um, you know, drinking is wrong, don't drink. Yeah. I see in scripture where it says, do not get drunk. But if you see somebody in a restaurant or something having a sip of wine or something, and, you know, next thing you know, they're calling, the, you know, Sister Susie better than Husey. You know? <laughs> you know? And they're getting on that phone and, 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 and telling them, yeah, yeah, I saw that what I saw! You wouldn't believe it! Yeah, she was just a sitting there. She was a slurping in a shopping. Yeah, she was. Yeah, I don't know who was with her, but let me tell you, it was not her husband. <laughs> That's how people are today, aren't they? Yeah. Instead of waiting and taking her aside and said, you know, I just saw this. Now, how many times do we come to the wrong conclusions on things? Mm -hmm. You know? I could say I saw Jennifer. Sorry, I'm picking on you, Jennifer. Oh, but Jennifer <laughs> sitting in a restaurant and everything, and there's a man there, and he has to be at least 95. You know, and I'm saying, man, he's got old for her. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> I get on the phone and call Richard McLaughlin. Hey, Richard, guess what I saw? <laughs> I saw Jennifer. Yeah, she was. She was just a, a sucking face with this guy. <laughs> things around and slip and they see things. You know, I've had it before where somebody come in, hey, I saw somebody coming out of the ABC store. I said, what was he doing? Getting some alphabet? <laughs> <laughs> Took it 
took me a while to figure out what an ABC store was. <laughs> and I said, no, she was carrying some, um, it looked like some whiskey or something in a brown paper bag. I said, well, how do you know it's for her? I don't know, but you know, she shouldn't be doing that. She's a Christian. You know, and, and see how I'm saying that people come to this conclusion, you wouldn't believe the phone call sometimes I get. And I gotta set them straight. You know? And this is the whole point what Paul is dealing with here. Alright? And if, if we are gonna be judged by God, if you don't think it's you know, have a drink or two, you know, it's it, it you know, in scripture says do not get drunk. You know, Paul told Timothy to take some wine. And I love a lot of people that they, 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 they try to say, well, that's unfermented wine. Why would you just drink green grape juice? Why don't you say grape juice? You know, it's fermented. And it, it, because alcohol has medicinal purposes. And I love it for the ones that say you shouldn't drink. But boy, when they get sick, they're drinking up that cough syrup. And what does that cough syrup have in it? Uh huh? And, and or, or, you know, they'll be. Uh, <clears throat> You know, getting on that cough syrup and, and slipping that down and everything else to get well. Because it has medicinal purposes in it. But again, if you feel if it's a conviction, don't do it. You know, if you don't want to be a stumbling block, especially to a younger Christian, don't do it. You see what I'm saying? Because it could be a stumbling block for somebody who's struggling with that. Then you're, you're sitting over there doing, wow, it's okay! And then go, 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 And they get snookered, you know? I always wonder about some of these Catholic priests and everything. I mean, they have weddings and funerals, and they use real wine. I said, you got to be I said to my wife, what time we went to a, a Catholic funeral? I said, man, if they have three or four of these a day, they'd be snookered by the time they get done, you know what I'm saying? They'd be, they'd be like, oh, where's the next funeral? <laughs> Just a happy walking. But we are to, how do you, the Christian, prepare for the judgment seat of Christ? By making him Lord of their life, faithfully obeying him. Faithfully obeying Jesus Christ. You know, and, and I'm going to leave you with this. Two of the most famous preachers in England, okay, and you know who I'm going to say it one of them. Spurgeon, okay. All right, and Joseph Parker, both of them mighty preachers of the gospel early in their ministry, they fellowship with one another, even exchanged pulpits. But they got into a dis, uh, disagreement. Spurgeon accused Parker of being unspiritual because he attended a theater. Interesting though, Spurgeon smoked cigars. A practice most believers would condemn. Who was right? Who was wrong? Again, it goes by personal conviction. Personal conviction. When it comes to questionable matters in the Christian life, cannot dedicate Christian dis uh, disagreement without being disagreeable. When Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, we permit him to deal with his own servants as he sees fit. We are Christ's. I'm not John, John Donaldson's. I'm not Sherry Richardson's. I'm Jesus Christ's. If you have a personal conviction, then do it. But don't push your convictions on other people. You know, are you, are you Christ's? Have you accepted his gift of redemption today? I mean, have you ever received his gift of redemption? If not, why not today? He will receive you, he will sustain you, and he will be your, your judge. He will be um, your Lord and judge because you serve him, you don't serve man. Right? And as um, they're going to sing our last, um, our invitational. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today.
Lord, as we see what Paul was dealing with with the Roman church and the dissensions that was going on between the, um, the, the, the stronger and the weaker Christians. And Lord, we have that today. We have people that are just so judgmental and they, they put their other convictions on other people. And Lord, we just um, pray, Father, that we, we, we know that we just serve Jesus Christ. We are free from the bondage. You know, and we're free, Father, from the bondage of sin. And we're free, Father, from the, the bondage of legalism and being held down because we are free in Christ. And Lord, and Lord, we just thank you so much for your word today, Father. And help us, Father, to serve you. And Lord, that we, we only answer to you. Instead of worrying about our brother and sister and what they're doing, we need to worry about what we're doing and just follow you. The same advice you gave to, to Peter. As we uplift your name today, in Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Amen.